Caleb's Story by Patricia McLaughlin, Chapter 12. This is the last chapter of this book. I didn't remember the wind dying in the night. I didn't remember falling asleep. When I woke, it was light, the sun high, shining on the ice trees. The fence around the paddock looked slick and cold. From my window, I could see the horses' cloud breaths as they ate hay. Cassie's room was empty, her bed rumpled. Grandfather's room was neat, his bed made. Next to the door stood his bag, all packed. The journal I had given him sat on top. I ran down the stairs, stopping suddenly in the kitchen. Grandfather and Sarah sat at the kitchen table drinking coffee. I could hear Cassie chattering to Papa in his bedroom. Sarah smiled at me. Sleep well, Caleb? I shook my head. What happened last night was my fault, I said. I put up the rope, Sarah. I must have done it wrong. Fault, said Sarah. Oh, Caleb, I want you to listen to me. There comes a time when fault doesn't matter. Things happen, and we can't blame ourselves or someone else forever. I heard a noise behind me and saw Papa standing there, Cassie beside him. I knew he had heard Sarah's words. Look, said Cassie, Papa's using a cane now. Papa sat down at the table. Grandfather poured him coffee. You must have been up all night, he said to Papa. Papa looked at Sarah. I didn't want her to go back to sleep, he said. Grandfather smiled. No, you didn't. Grandfather stretched. I have some things to finish before he stopped. He looked at us for a moment, then he walked up the stairs. Before what? asked Cassie. Before he leaves, I said quickly. His bag is packed upstairs. He told me that soon you could go back to work, Papa, that you'd be happier then. Papa looked toward the stairs. I don't want Grandfather to go away said Cassie. I don't. Her eyes filled with tears. Cassie, said Sarah softly, please make your bed. Do I have to, said Cassie. Sarah smiled. All right, said Cassie. She ran off, her shoes clattering on the wooden stairs. Sarah looked at me, and I knew what that look meant. I should leave them alone, too. I took a biscuit and started up the stairs. Things happen, Jacob, I heard Sarah say. The rope broke. I could have died. Don't, Sarah, said Papa. You could have lost me, Jacob, said Sarah. And that's the way life is. Something happens. One little moment in time. If you're lucky, you have a chance to make things better. You have that chance here. Don't let it pass. I heard Papa get up from the chair. Do you want some help? asked Sarah. No, said Papa. I'll do this myself. I walked up the stairs quietly. Papa slowly coming up the stairs behind me. Grandfather stood at his window looking out over the farm. As if he didn't see me, Papa passed me and went up into Pop Grandfather's room. Grandfather and Papa. So much of it, Grandfather. Sit down. Ted. I'll stand, said Papa. There was a long softer than I'd heard. Why didn't you take me with you? These years, I wanted to be with you. No matter where you... Jacob, said Grandma. You didn't... And I waited and... I know. I didn't know how I learned. Closer to Grandfather. Whispered Grandfather. You. The evenings in this room, how to read. Caleb, all those years. And I begin to think that made you go away. Your mother and I could was wrong. It was my fault. Papa very softly. Fault doesn't matter. And father handed Papa. Papa read what? Please don't leave. Stairs where Sarah said to Sarah. Got up and came to see. Nothing said Sarah. The kitchen is full of people familiar. See as they hope up the road and didn't Patricia McLaughlin.